Hello, I'm Will. Welcome to the Tesla Jigsaw. Electric cars are way more efficient than ICE cars, have instant acceleration, are much cheaper to run and maintain, they are safer, there's more internal space, they are easier to drive, far cleaner and greener for the planet, and much better for the air that we all breathe. Oh, and they can also run on sunshine for free. All this good news somehow gets ignored. You might have already figured this out for yourself, or you might be foaming at the mouth with rage at these statements, but if you are open-minded enough and willing to change your opinions based on facts, I think this video might be helpful. Give it a go and let me know! The most compelling arguments for electric vehicles. Less than 1% of EV owners want to go back to ICE cars. Just consider that for a moment. 99% of people who switch to an electric car won't ever buy a car with an engine again. Even these, I guess, early adopters who have had to compromise with perhaps less range and expensive purchase price and deal with a growing charging infrastructure still see the many advantages over their previous petrol or diesel car. Can you even think of another major product with a 99% satisfaction rate? I can't. Mmm. Donuts? Mmm. Donut. EVs can and do run on sustainable, clean energy. As more renewable energy is connected to the grid, such as wind and solar, the cleaner all electricity generation is becoming. Better still, homeowners have the option to power their car using solar panels. You cannot make your own fossil fuels, but you can capture the sun's energy and power your car for free, forever. It's also worth noting that the UK's national grid have confirmed on many occasions that there is plenty of electricity to go around for the rapid uptake of electric cars, most of which are charged overnight when energy prices are at their cheapest and the grid is at its greenest. I'm not trying to rhyme, it's just coming out that way for some reason. EVs are safer in accidents. With lower rollover resistance thanks to a floor of batteries, the likelihood of serious injury from rolling an EV is greatly reduced for you and your family. Plus, the empty space where the engine used to live is now an extra crumple zone, instead of your legs. Whilst I'm not entirely sure about all EVs, I know that Teslas are impossible to roll away when nobody is in the car, as it automatically puts the car in park once you open the door. Who knows how many unsuspected squashed humans this has saved. With a million deaths a year globally on our roads and many millions more injured, it's high time dumb cars became smart. With Tesla's eight external cameras, some accidents are avoided altogether thanks to the car being aware of its surroundings and taken over when necessary. I've had first-hand experience of this. My car took over when another was about to swipe me on the motorway and most definitely saved me and my family from a massive motorway pile-up. It didn't, however, save the damage to my pants. Electric motors are far more efficient than internal combustion engines. An EV directly converts electricity into movement. This makes it far more efficient than a conventional car, which has to burn fuel to create heat and then convert heat into motion. Still with me? The average EV is more than 80% efficient from the moment you turn it on. Even the best diesel engines, fully warmed up, struggle to get to 40% efficiency. In other words, a conventional car wastes well over half the energy in its fuel. It's worth noting, the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y drive system has an efficiency of around 97%. That's incredible. Way less to maintain. With around 2,000 plus moving parts in an internal combustion engine's drivetrain and an average of just 20 parts in an EV's, there are simply fewer parts to go wrong or replace. Washer fluid and tyres are all that's required for normal maintenance. EV's will become far cheaper. No more cost savings can be made building ICE cars. They have reached the height of money-saving efficiencies. However, EV's will continue to decline in cost as economies of scale increase as in, the more you make, the cheaper it becomes, battery costs continue to fall, and manufacturing improvements continue to eke out savings from this new way of building cars. Europe is about to be flooded with cheap Chinese cars that have the range, quality and price to undercut any legacy car companies. Tesla and Volkswagen are gearing up to release their own $25,000 compact car, and there is a way for Tesla to continue to drive down its cost to produce vehicles to even below that. With EVs now pretty much reaching price parity with ICE cars, which means they're roughly the same price, when you include the cost savings over time, it's already a no-brainer financially to buy a brand new EV over a brand new ICE car. More range than necessary! On a daily basis, cars in the UK drive an average of 20 miles a day, 142 miles a week, 617 miles a month. With most new EVs having more than 200 miles of range, this is more than adequate for the vast majority of people, especially if you're one of the 60% of people in the UK that has a driveway and can charge at home. 
Charging locations are everywhere nowadays. This is ZapMap, for example. Just look at all these charges. There's more charges than land. That's not true. That's a false. No, what I could slide. What no? If you are traveling far, charging times are around 20 minutes at rapid or supercharger locations, and that's barely enough time to have a wee and grab a coffee. For fleet buyers, Tesla have just announced a Model 3 long range rear wheel drive that has almost 400 miles range. I don't know about you, but my bladder range is around 100 miles. I'm not sure why anyone would want to travel 400 miles without taking a quick break. As travelling wedding musicians, our 220 mile real world range Model 3 has more than enough range for us to get to and from our gigs with ease. And not once in four years of our ownership have we had range anxiety. Fully recyclable. Battery packs are worth a lot of money at the end of an EV's life. And 92% of the chemicals within the batteries can be recycled into new batteries. This is cheaper than mining for new raw materials, and because it makes financial sense to recycle them, I believe the incentive is there to make this happen around the world. Former Chief Technical Officer of Tesla, JB Straubel, is the co-founder and CEO of Redwood Materials. The company has partnered with Tesla, Ford, Volkswagen, Volvo, Panasonic and others to recycle those companies' battery packs. Eventually, a closed loop system of reusing and recycling old battery packs will mean just a fraction of mining needs to be done in the future. Admittedly a long way off, but a great step towards a sustainable future. If it were not for pioneers like Elon Musk and JB Straubel, our future would look a lot bleaker. If you're appreciating the efforts here, I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit that thumbs up button please, and uh, subscribe too if you're feeling generous. Thanks so much. No exhaust equals no pollution. EVs do not impact the health of you, your family or your community. If you think ICE cars are somehow less polluting, which has been banded about, which running car would you rather spend five minutes with in a closed garage, an EV or an ICE car? Even brakes are barely used in an EV. One Tesla owner achieved 250,000 miles on one set of brake pads. This is due to regenerative braking, which uses the motor to slow down the car it regains kinetic energy that would otherwise be lost during braking. This also means far less brake dust. One pedal driving is a pleasure to use and really makes sense once you try it. I'm fully aware that mining for battery materials creates pollution and is certainly not 100% lovely in some cases, but when weighing up against continuing to drill for oil, the complexities of refining and transporting the black sludge around the world in tankers that's also running on black sludge, plus the odd catastrophe of oil spills, oil pipes bursting, and even oil fires in the sea. Didn't even know that could happen. Mining standards around the world are far better. No doubt could be improved upon, but mining for battery materials does not pose the same risk to our planet or the air that we breathe as burning fossil fuels at an industrial and local level does. You may have heard of cobalt. It's no longer used in Tesla's LFP battery packs, which accounts for half of Tesla's sold last quarter and is obviously a step in the right direction. But even saying that, how will the cobalt miners feed their families if it's no longer needed? There's always different viewpoints and far more grey areas than people would like to admit. Nothing's in black and white here. The environmental impact of shifting to an electric economy is not zero, but when compared with our previous path of a fossil fuel burning economy, it's not only absolutely necessary to move away from that as quickly as possible for life on Earth to flourish, but an economical opportunity like we've never seen before. It really boils down to this. Do we want clean air to breathe in the future or not? Embrace positive change. Over 22% of new cars sold in 2022 were EVs and the uptake is growing exponentially. Like it or not, engines will soon be a thing of the past and be banned altogether in most cons and be banned altogether in many con and be banned altogether in many com say countries, and be banned altogether in many countries. The internal combustion engine will take its place in history alongside steam trains and horse and carts. There was a time that people were terrified to use a lift stroke elevator once the operator had been replaced with buttons. There was also a time where the last man in town relented and bought his first car to replace his horse and cart. Change can be hard. I loved my old dressing gown, for example, and miss it dearly. <laughs> But with EVs having so many more benefits over ICE cars, it's not an exaggeration to say that EVs are simply better at being cars. EVs impacts. The disruption still to come in the automotive industry will be enormous. See Nikola, Blockbuster, <laughs> Freudian slip, see Nikola Motors, soon to be bankrupt. See Nokia, Blockbuster or Kodak for previous companies that failed to adapt to disruption and paid the ultimate price. 
It's my opinion that after a 19 year first mover advantage that Tesla has positioned itself to not only offer the best electric cars on every metric I've outlined earlier, but will continue to accelerate its lead away from any so-called competition and dominate the car industry like nothing we've ever seen. For me and a few others, it's been fascinating to watch Tesla develop into a company that's not only twisted the arms of every serious car manufacturer to switch to EVs, but also the first company to come up with a viable plan to switch the world to a renewable electric economy. Want to know how? Click the card in the corner to see my Tesla Investor Day presentation video. I really hope that this has been helpful. Do let me know what you think in the comments below and feel free to share it with anyone who might or might not be interested in it. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I've got loads more random Tesla and electric car videos on my channel, so take a look. Oh, here's two more, just here, look. Click on one of them if you like. I'm Will, this is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thanks so much for watching.